hi everyone in this video i will be explaining the fabrication process flow cmos fabrication process flow at submicron technology right the first and foremost step in the fabrication is to prepare the substrate or the base material a p depth wafer with a p epitaxial layer is taken as a substrate the term epitax c refers to growing a high resistive material or a layer upon a low resistive layer if you split this term epitaxy ap refers to upon and taxi refers to growth so epitaxy is nothing but growing a high resistive material over a low resistive material assume that you people have got a wafer silicon wafer of type p with some low resistance upon this if you could develop or grow a high resistive p type material then the process is referred as epitaxial epitaxial growth and this layer is used as a base material for cmos fabrication in submicron technology once after the substrate is prepared as per our requirement the very first step in the fabrication is to define the active regions out of the entire substrate region for defining the active region first the entire surface should be coated with a pad oxide and the silicon nitride silicon nitride has got a higher temperature withstand capability hence instead of going with sio2 silicon nitride will be used for the fabrication at submicron technology so after depositing the pad oxide and silicon nitride the entire surface of the wafer or the entire region of the substrate should be coated with a photoresist and assume that you people are using a positive photoresist here and after that place a mask through the mask you expose the arrangement to the uv radiation that will lift the structure which has been shown in the figure b here so since you people are using a positive photoresist whatever the area that has been exposed to the uv radiations will become soluble and that can be easily hedged off by using the developers so after hedging of the silicon nitride and the pad oxide which has been exposed to the uv radiations you people will get the structure which has been shown in figure b right and you can observe that this region represent a p type substrate substrate material h of some portion of the p type substrate here and fill it with an oxide layer which are technically referred as shallow trench isolation these are nothing but the ducts in the silicon filled with oxide layers so this shallow trench isolation layers are nothing but the fox layers this is STI layers are an alternative for the Fox layers. So this STI layers provides isolation between the adjacent devices that are going to be created. Okay, so you can observe that. So this is one active region and this is the another active region where you people can easily fabricate or create N mass and P mass. And as you all know, for the fabrication of the P mass, the base material should be of type N. So first create an N well, create an envel inside the p substrate and implant one threshold voltage layer this threshold voltage layer is to adjust the threshold voltage of n mass and p mass and now you can observe that in this area n mass can be fabricated wherein inside this envel p mass can be fabricated in the subsequent figures the threshold voltage implants will not be shown explicitly okay so after the creation of the envel grow a thin layer of gate oxide which is also referred as thin oxide or gate oxide then deposit a layer of polysilicon and pattern the polysilicon to get the structure which is shown in figure e where this acts as a gate terminals for n mass and p mass since the gate has been created before the source and drain the process is referred as self-aligned process okay after the gate is created implant two layers of type n towards n mass and p implant towards p mass and these two implants are referred as ldd implants which is nothing but lightly doped drying okay i will explain why it is referred as lightly doped drying in the next step 
right after the two implants are created inside a p, p type material and n well the adjacent sides of the poly should be covered with an oxide layers which are referred as spacers which are technically referred as spacers and then diffuse to n plus region in the n mass region by covering the p mass region by using an n plus select mask to get the source and drain of n mass in the same way create two p plus diffused layers or ion implanted layers which represents source and drain of p mass along with the creation of source and drains of the mass if it is you can observe that even the polysilicon gate has been doped where n plus dopants will be used for n mass and p plus dopants will be used for p mass right and observe here the this separation this separation is nothing but the channel and you can observe that this is p layer and this is p plus layer the region which is nearer to the channel is lightly doped when compared to the region which is away from the channel so these two implants which are created in the previous stages are referred as lightly doped drain implants did you understand this i repeat it the region which is close to the channel in both n mass and p mass are lightly doped when compared to the region which is away from the channel and hence these two implants are referred as lightly doped drain implants right and the resistance of the polysilicon the resistance of the polysilicon is high so to reduce the resistance to reduce the resistance of the polysilicon the polysilicon can be added with some refractory metals like tungsten and molybdenum in order to reduce the resistance if you add a refractory materials to the poly then the layers are then the layer is referred as silicide layers where you people can observe in the figure h the silicide layer the silicon with refractory material has been deposited on n plus polysilicon in the same way here the silicide layer has been deposited on p plus polysilicon okay and the gate is referred as polyside gate the gate is referred as polyside gate because a silicide structure has been deposited on a polygate what 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 do you mean by the silicide layer silicon with some refractory materials so this refractory materials is used with the silicon in order to reduce the resistance okay in the same way you can observe the silicide structures even at the source and drain regions this is a silicide structure this is also a silicide this is a silicide and this is also a silicide structure okay so if you use i'll show the important key points over here right silicide the combination of the silicon with some refractory materials is referred as a silicide structure since the polysilicon has got high resistance value to re reduce the resistance of the polysilicon silicide structures will be used okay so what is the silicide structure silicon silicide gate if the silicide layer itself is used as a gate material then the gate is referred as silicide gate if silicide is deposited on the polygate which is similar to the figure i have shown here in the figure h you can observe that the silicide structure has been deposited on the polygate then such gates are referred as polyside gates okay then you people are have, i mean i have shown the silicide structure even for the source and drain so the mass if it is having polyside gate with silicide source and drains are referred as salicide salicide structure polyside gate with silicide source and drain are referred as salicide structure so the final figure that is figure h will represent salicide structure of n mass and p mass and this completes the fabrication process of cmos at submicron technology